Hi, in this video I would like to introduce you to the Luminet Monitor RDM widget. To launch the widget, simply click on the RDM button on the top end bar. Here, on the left hand side, you can see the main switch to enable or disable RDM communication from Luminet Monitor. Right next to it, you will see the number of outlets Luminet Monitor has discovered which are RDM enabled. In my case, and as I'm using a Ethernet DMX4 to discover the RDM devices, I've got all outlets with RDM enabled. However, I only have RDM devices connected to outlet 1, 2 and 3. And this is why you see three discovered RDM enabled outlet here. Next to it, you will see the number of RDM messages being processed during the uh, outlet discovery. By default, Luminet Monitor will ask every single Luminex uh, Ethernet DMX converter to give and forward the table of device of RDM connected devices. This will be done automatically. However, and for the purpose of this demonstration, I will do it manually. Right now, I press on the false discovery button to launch the discovery. Here you can see is the software is currently working on the secondary outlet. And this is the number of RDM messages being processed for that outlet. On the left hand side, you can see an icon representing a connected or disconnected devices. A connected device is represented with a green icon. A disconnected device is represented with a green uh, a red icon. During the discovery process, it might happen that some devices appear offline, as right now, but this is due to the discovery process. There is nothing wrong with that. Next to it, you can see the ID column. It can come in handy to put the exact same fixture ID as the one set into the lighting control console. Like this, the person in charge, or let's say the moving light tech, can talk about the exact same ID as the lighting controller. Next to it, you can see the RDM UID. UID stands for Unique Identifier. This is, can be compared as a MAC address for lighting fixture. On the left hand side, you can see the vendor ID. In my case here it's Luminex 4C4C. And next to it, you can see the device ID itself. All these RDM UID are obviously unique. Next to it, you see the IP address, which is currently forwarding all RDM information to the Luminet Monitor application. In my case, this is the IP address of the Ethernet DMX4. And that's the short name you see here, the Artnet short name. Next to it, I can see on which port of the converter those discovered RDM devices are connected to. Here, I can see that three Robin Spider are connected to the first port of the Ethernet DMX4, a Lumi split is connected on the first port as well, another Lumi split on the second port, and a Lumi split 1.6 on the third port. The fact is, I see two Lumi split 2.10 here. But the truth is that this is one unique device. The Lumi split offers two input, input A and input B. And from the RDM perspective, they are seen as two responder. Why? In the case you would like to use the Lumi split as a backup input unit, and then in the, uh, in the in the unlikely event that you lose DMX on input A, you would like, I guess, still to be able to uh, monitor your splitter from input B. This is why you have two responder per unit. What we can conclude as well is that those Robin Spider are connected on the same port as the Lumi split. So it might be possible that those fixtures are connected directly to that Lumi split. Next. You can see the model information. Next, you can see the manufacturer information, the label, which can be changed. The universe, the ArtNet universe, which forwards this information to the application, the DMX address, the power state, the lamp state and lamp power, the category of devices, and you can add a location as well. Upstage, downstage, stage left, stage right. This is up to you. And finally, you can add comments as well. 
fixture needs to be replaced please check gobo wheel and so on what can we achieve with the rdm panel if i select one of these fixture and if i put and hover the mouse over this i can see additional information such as the version of the software which is currently 2.3 the number of sensors inside the device, the DMX address currently in use. I can see that this device offers 10 personalities, 10 modes, and I'm using the second one, which is DMX preset 2, with a footprint of 27 channels. The identify state is off. The device has been used 507 hours. The display is not inverted. The display is level is at full and the pan and tilt are not inverted. If you right click by selecting the device, the software offers you additional menu. You can clear the device. You can identify the device directly from there. That's what we do. And press off to stop the identification. You can check if the device send you messages. This is the case here. The device tells us it's time to clean the air filters. You can change the personality from here. In my case, I'll be using the MX preset 2 with a footprint of 27 channels because that's the way they are patched into the console. You can invert the display and set the level from there. You can invert the pan and tilt, reset the device and you can even send a mail about the status of the device. As you can see here, all devices are using the MX address one. So I'd like to patch them according to my patch in my console. So I select the first device and I press shift and select the last device so that they are all selected together. If I now right click and I select patch, I access the patch menu. Here, the old button is selected, which means they are all highlighted because the auto identify menu is enabled. So I will deselect all to take them one by one. And I will use the following arrows to go from one unit to another, like this. In my case, I would like the first unit on the very left hand side to be the first device. As I said previously, I can put the same fixture ID as the one used in the, into the lighting console. So I would set fixture ID 101 for that first device. And I'm, as I know that the fixture is currently using 27 channel, the software will offer me from the next address 28 as this is 1 plus 27 for the next address. And I can also set a fixture ID increment of 1 if I really want to do it that way. So this selected device is currently flashing. So that's the first one I want to be set to one. I press patch. And now I select this, this, well, the, the one should be the second one for me, which is that one. I press patch. And now I select the third one, which is that one. And I press patched. So now the three devices has been patched. If I press close button, I can see now that those three devices have received an uh, the MX address, 128 and 55, and the cells turn green. This means that the, the fixture itself acknowledged on the fact that he has correctly set this DMX address. This is very useful if you are trying to set an address on the fixture which is not visible, or if you are patching a large, large lighting rig let's say 600 fixture and during a break and you come back and you can't remember where you were at, simply sort by patched fixture. It would be much easier for you to retrieve where you were at before the break. If another RDM controller is on the network and if that other RDM controller changed the DMX address, the cell will turn orange, which will indicate you that someone else or uh, another RDM controller on the network has changed the DMX address. This can be very handy to avoid confusion. If you select again one of the fixtures and go to the control menu now, you can see the exact same menu that you have seen before with a right click, but more detail, where you can get the latest information 
from the device or you can have a set button to send the information directly to the device in my case I would like to call uh, to set this label to demo and I would send it to the device this is done it's called demo in the DMX tab I can change the personality as well from there this is just another way to do it I can change the DMX address I won't do it I can get access to all the sensors of the devices like the temperature or the wireless signal state this is very handy for maintenance and uh, troubleshooting the power lamp I can get the latest info this is a LED fixture that actually the power or the LED or the device uh, hours are the same I can get access to the display and if the device supports it you can also send custom PIDs this is what you can do with the generic uh, RDM devices in the next video I'm going to show you what you can do with a LumiSplit and Luminate Monitor RDM panel thanks for watching